expertise, but it's so good to uh, to be uh, here. Thank you for your patience uh, to be with us tonight and joining us. I have my special guest, uh, Dr. Roy uh, Pender, a great friend of mine. And we're just going to discuss again. We you know we do apologize for the for our lateness, and um, but we are awesome. You know, we are uh, glad that you're here with us tonight. So, my brother, what's going on, man? What's up? Hey, man, thanks for being here. Hey, that's life. You know, you got to work through those, what you call uh, challenges and figure things out and go through the process, which you know, okay. you with the host to show and do some things. So, hey, we go into the process, which leads us into the theme of the night. You know, that's inspiring yeah. your dreams and following through. So look forward to the dialogue. Everything comes with timing as you learn and we learn. Hopefully we, we give the listeners and our viewers some some nuggets to take away. Yeah, but man. Happy to be and let's get it. Let's get it on. My brother, I'm glad. I'm glad to have you on. Glad to have you with me, man. We've been talking about it for a while, but I want you to um, man talk about the story, man. Talk about we talk about pursuing your dream. Tell us about your your path from West End to where you are now, man. Just 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 jump right in on it. Yes, yes, the, the the small island of West End, which is the most beautiful place in the Bahamas. Many may disagree, but they love the Bahamas. I uh, love the view and visit. But no, uh, you know, West End, it's a, it's a small community in, in, in the island of Grand Bahama, which is the first city to some, second to many. Uh, but, you know, it, it's in West End, what you would consider to most, and here in the U.S., we consider the country, small island. Yeah. We, we we like to get things to us. We like to get all the good things that, that happens in life. We like to get those Jordans and and those <laughs> nice um, EK and and, and the iPods and all the different things. They they like to come, but we somehow figured out. But for me, you know, growing up in a small community like West End, you know, I saw how to you know quite some guys went off to college and they were successful. So my measure of success was what you know what I saw some within the community, which was not a whole lot uh, abundant to uh, identify with. But what I just watched on TV and, and just analyzed, and, and one of the beautiful things I did at a, a young age was we live in a tourist town, and there was always a lot of tourists, successful professionals who traveled in and out of the out of the out of the country. Yeah. And so I always was inquisitive, so I asked a lot of questions. How do what is college like? How does it go to school? What does it take to be successful? And so from a very early age, I started that process. In fact, um, you know, when at the age of eight or nine. I, I was an entrepreneur. I was actually either collecting golf balls, making a few panties on that, um, selling e uh, sea urchins like conch shells <clears throat> to the passing tourists. And more importantly, my first gig really was I started to organize what I call little basketball tournaments. So okay. I was uh, a parking okay. ball and I used all my money to build a little what I can consider conventional court outside of using the crate oh, on the court. Okay. <laughs> I invested in a backboard and an actual rim. Uh, you remember the store? I think it was called ABA. Now I'm ABA. back in the day. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I bought a rim and a nets and a, an actual car. So I was one of the I was the hardest show in town outside of the school facility, and I organized events and guys would come in to play two and two, three and three, one on one tournaments, shoot marbles, and I would also sell popsicles. I was okay, wow. Well, that's and good. Them into popsicles <laughs> and ice and ice and icies, and sell them at a nickel or a dime, and so. I was always organizing and always had an entrepreneurial spirit. Yeah, awesome, but, you yeah. Know, so I went through the process and, you know, going through high school in, the, in Freeport, uh, I mean, in West End. I um, actually went to Nassau for a few few years, which allowed me to see what a bigger city, moving city was like. Came yeah. back to Freeport and finished out. You know, I had a stellar, would you consider, high school career. Won the, uh, the Catholic High Tournament, won the National High School Tournament. Never won the Hugh Campbell, though. I think we traded that year uh, with, with, with uh, AF Adley, Dexter King. I got that one on you then. And so, I got that one on you. <laughs> but go ahead. <laughs> you got your job on me. That's correct. Yeah. 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 Go ahead, bro. Good, good growth. And, yeah, so, man. Yeah. and so what you consider, um, you know, a pretty stellar career. And most, you know, most of the time guys of the island, um, you know, who went off to college were, with, were pretty much a six five, six six, six seven. Yeah, I mean, very yeah. athletic, big yeah, guy. Yeah, definitely, so yeah. Guys like you and I who were smaller, you know, six three and below, it was really tough to get up the islands. But you know, let it be known, my my strength was track and field. To be honest with you, okay, well, wow, yeah. So, but I love basketball, uh, and I, you know, and so anyhow, um, had a really good career. Didn't go to college right away. You know, had some some things that I wouldn't say set me back, but shaped my life. And so I had to spend a couple of years before I went to school. But in my first year out of high school, 
I went into the great man, the great Jimmy Clark, and we talked. Yeah. Hey, I was calling. I said, Coach, yeah, I'm yeah. in college. Yeah. He said, what do you mean you're not in college? I said, Coach, I'm just working, trying to, you know, take care of my stuff and handle some things I have to take care of. And he said, No, no, you need to be in college. I said, Okay, Coach, well, if I, an opportunity comes, I'll be more than happy to embrace it. Coach set some things up. And so I was supposed to go on a visit and I needed to get my own chicken and everything else in April. And I wasn't able to come with the funds. And I wow. said, I can't make sure when you see us coming fast, I said, God, I'm serious. I just don't have the money. And so he's like, you'll find out if you really want to go. And I said, okay. Again, another nugget, guy, feeling into your life. Yeah. Uh, so you know what I did? I went and actually started to learn how to um, make cement, like, learn how to paint houses. And for two weeks, <laughs> I started wow. looking how to paint a house, wow. make cement. And I was able to raise enough money. And it was three days of school left. And I was still $20 short. And so I still was able to find a way to get a, a, a purchase a plane ticket. And yeah, so cool, yeah. and on my way, this is on my going to recruiting visit now. So I had a good friend from Western, Marco, still one of my better friends today. And Marco came and picked me up from the airport, I mean, from my house. And from my house, you know, Western is about 30 minutes away from yeah. the airport. Definitely, so yeah. Marco came and picked me up. And I was on our way in about from my house to the main road. I, the car started to jump. I said, Mark, and I looked, I said, the car was on empty. I said, man, why would you come here with the car on E? He's like, we, we'll make it to the, to the gas station. I said, Marco, the next gas station is about 15 minutes away, man. We talked to him when we had to get there. True story. I said, Marco, we didn't, we made him maybe five minutes up the street. And you know, between Western and Freeport, it's just a lot of, it's not much going on. Yeah, I got you. A car pass. So the next thing trucking, you better catch. Well, you know what's the next thing trucking? A fisherman truck, a cum truck with a bunch of fishermen. <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah. That's so true. Oh, wow. I have to make a decision like, man, do I wait for the next thing to come, which can be another 30 minutes? Or do I hop in here and, and may get to the airport on time? Well, the decision uh, was to hop in that truck. I know the gentleman really well, good, good gentleman. In fact, um, you know, he was a good gentleman. And so I got on the, the, the truck. I mean, we going slow. So I, I kid you, we got to Queens Highway. And you'll know this. And, you know, the Borden's Cream ice cream place. And we got there. I said, Mr. Ali, uh, right here, let me off. And, you know, it's quite a commute back to the airport, which is about a mile back. I know I could have probably run faster than that truck could have gone there. So I ran <laughs> with my luggage. <laughs> ran with my luggage all the way back. Oh, boy. So I got to the airport. And um, at that time, I only had, I had about $12. And, you know, back then, you have to have what you consider the departure tax money, which is 18 bucks at the time. Yeah, yeah. Like that, whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. And so I had that $18, I mean, $12. And so the light went in line. The lady's like, hey, you need the money to not only have departure tax, but you have to have money to spend so you wouldn't be a burden on people when you get to the country. That's part of the law. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, well... Um, I, I'm supposed to meet my coach there. She's like, no, no, off the bar. So she made me get on the line, and I was, like, really sad. So once everybody went, I walk up, and my words were exactly this. Ma'am, if you allow me to get on this plane, I will not only make the country proud, I'll make you proud, make my mom proud. This is my last shot at having an opportunity to go to college. And I, I assure you, when I get there, I will call you. My coach will call, and we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll have enough funds to be taken care of. But this is my last opportunity that I can see in front of me to make something of my life and something wow. of myself. And I said, I'm from West End. And when she asked from West End, ironically, she had found me from West End, so she okay. had to yeah. struggle. Yeah. Yeah. And that lady allowed me to get on that plane. And, and, and not to go further ahead in the story, but once I got the scholarship, I came back. I, and when I when I graduated, I went and found that lady that I did something very special. I wouldn't tell you what I did, but yeah, I, I, I gave you. a nice financial blessing. Yeah, and that's yeah, awesome. Thank you for that process. That's but good. again, when you talk about pursuing your dreams, these are the things that happen. Like. You have to go through something. You know, nothing is promised and, and, and nothing is given. You have to actually go through things as I begin to talk and, and it's like, you know, when I go through my process. And it's, and it's the first thing. And, you know, um, uh, Pastor Kerry, the first thing happened when I got on campus in college. Now, not, not only that, when I got on campus to work for the trial, uh, I went there and I played. And then 15 minutes. The coach told me playing 50 minutes, and he's like, he took me to the back, and he made me sign a piece of paper. He gave me the pink copy. I said, well, what is this? He said, this is a scholarship. You, you're covered, and you don't have to worry about paying for school that's again. Right, that's and right. one of these. Yeah. And at the end of the day, when I was done playing, I took off my shoes, my tennis shoes, and the bottom of my foot was like, was bleeding. It was basically, why, 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 why are your feet bleeding? I was like, um, 
Oh, yes. And I said, well, I have a hole at the bottom of my shoe. And, 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 and when I, really, oh, really man. Sorry, and when I showed him the hole at the bottom, it was about the diameter in length. He couldn't believe it. He's like, you play like that this whole time? I said, you have to do what you have to do. So I never made an excuse. I never went there and said, coach, I can't, but I need a pair of shoes. You know, I know he would probably give me the pair of shoes, but I want him to know I was there for the right reasons. And then he yeah, gave me a pair of shoes to take that's back good. to me. But in short, and so anyhow, that's the first part of the story for me being to where I am today. I have to go through that to appreciate that. You know, when I got on campus, once I got on campus, it was, you know, it was a lot easier for me because I had to go through that process and, you know, I had a lot of success on campus. You know, all, um, there's a lot of, you know, uh, on um, uh, uh, successes where it's from academics on a roll, presidents on a roll, president academic club. I have some of the most prestigious internships when I was on campus, first of the kind for one who attended that particular college, um, a lot of athletic accolades, and all of the things that comes with hard work and being successful. And so that, that very piece of it allows you to go through that whole process yeah. and just dialing in. And every time I, I felt like things were tough, mm -hmm. I always thought about how hard it was to get from, from West End to Oklahoma and that wow. process and that in between. And how many guys I knew who said, they, they always give me the reasons why they came home and never finished college, but they never told me they never had enough reasons to stay. And my reason to stay was family for me. And I just wanted to be successful. I had a dream. My dream was to go and make a difference in life. And how can I do awesome. that? I can do that without a good education and understanding what that process is like to get there. That's good, you know, man. You, you, you can attest to that too. Yeah, man. You 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 mentioned uh, you uh, you mentioned a man, um, his name. Uh, you said Coach Clark, Coach Jimmy Clark. Clark. You mentioned his name. Matter of fact, he he was he was the coach. Uh, matter of fact, he coached me also too. But were there any other uh, men that you would say impacted your life, um, you know, in Western, in, in Grand Bahama at the time that you were here? Uh, well, are there any? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So in, in Grand Bahama in general, we all know the great D.I. Derek Isaacs. <laughs> uh, you know, um, That's my what, guy right there. <laughs> That's my what guy. DI, what D.I. did for us was taught us to be tough, like how to how to compete, be tough and be fearless, but still understand as a friendly rivalry. You did. And he had summer leagues and, and, and the different stuff and all the different things involved. In fact, a funny story I want to share real quick. Me and the gentleman <laughs> right here <laughs> were rivalry. You and, tell it, sorry, buddy. You I tell it. I the game. No doubt I was officiating the game. And we, had, we exchanged some words and it got a little physical. And, and he had, but, but you know what? The day we are brotherly love, like those things made us <laughs> But, but D.I. invented a lot of those things, and that's like, it's okay to have those moments and still be friends later on. And so I think those are important. You know, I can't, I, I, I have to attest to the great more than my feet. He always, yeah. he, he helped me to be more cerebral in my game. He never actually coached me in uh, high school, but on some of the national things. And when we traveled abroad, I had an opportunity to play from an all-star setting games. And he just had such a high intellect about the game in terms of how to, you know, be effective on both ends of the floor, and particularly offensively. And so he, you know, he brought a whole another level to my game in terms of that. Rango and McIntosh was good. I was my high school coach. I mm -hmm. didn't yeah. he, just, he just really instilled. He taught me. He, made, he gave me a lot of confidence to be a good like That's you can good. do whatever you want to do. Um, I I would go. My high school teacher, Miss Giddings, uh, in accounting, she taught me. She's like, you want to be an accountant? You can do this. And she just stayed with me and and helped me to become a a, a really good student. And one of my local inspirations was uh, um, a goon, um, yeah. um, goon Coma. You know, he's one of the very few to go to college and come back and do a lot of great things in the environment and community. And I've, we've done some some things together. And of course, you know, my mom is, you know, goes without saying she's 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 a soldier. And yeah, she's always my inspiration and motivation to you know keep keep me moving along in terms of you know West End. So you know, the first part of it is just how do I get to college. The next part of it now, I'm sure you would like to know, is in terms of what happened once you got the college and beyond. Exactly. And I think, um, exactly. you know, those, those are, so on my way to college, one more story, on my way to college, uh, so when I actually came to college, I came to college with 40 cents and an apple in my pocket. That's all I had. 40, 40 cents, cents and an apple. And an apple, wow. and, an apple mm -hmm. and a big blue suitcase. <laughs> and that's it. And, 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 and a world of dreams and hope. Hope that 
um, I can become a better me. And how yeah, do I improve yeah. that? And so, yeah. you know, one thing I know, I have some place to, 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 to live and eat and educate myself. And so, mm -hmm. yes, 40 cents a night was all I had. And I was like, you know mm -hmm. what? I don't know what I'm going into. But in a small town of Oklahoma, and it's two hours away from the airport with a lot of cows in between those drivers, it was really nerve wracking. <laughs> but I made it through. You know, That's good, um, bro. That's good, man. <laughs> yes, sir. You know, once, you know, uh, Pastor Curry, once I got through high school, I mean, to call it, sorry. And, you know, we all have aspirations of playing professional ball at a professional level. And I further with some professional endeavors at uh, the CBA level and, 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 and international play. Uh, but, you know, it was short-lived. And I had to make a decision, when did this dream end? And, and when do this chapter of the dream end and the next mm. chapter of the dream begin? And I think it, it's, it's, a, it's a very nerve-wracking deal. And in fact, I share a story later with me and my son, some of the things I learned. But... I didn't realize it then, but you know what we struggle with from the transition from a high level or competitive athlete to, to regular life? It's so now what? Yeah. Now what's yeah. next? So and true. So, and 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 um and I talked about this with yeah, as I talked to my son, but I have to go through that so now what moment. And a lot of athletes don't get to that. They don't yeah. they stay there like so now what and, and not do anything. But so now what? I've had a bachelor's degree at this time and I've had um you know, uh, about 12 hours of my uh, master's, master level classes. So mm. it was easy for me. So I had the opportunity to come in and work for two Fortune 200 companies straight out of college. After That's I awesome. did, you know, yeah. messing around with that basketball stuff. Yeah. Which That's was good. great because it gave me nuggets on how to be successful uh, in the corporate world, in the business world. I transcend all those, all of those skills of being competitive, sharing, communication, um, just, just perseverance. Just continue to move through it, regardless of the challenges. You know, how do you, how do you get through that process and, and continue to be successful? How do you identify what success look, uh, looks like? And and so, I always try to now push the nugget. And so, went from WorldCom as a financial analyst, I spent a year there. Then I moved on to the Williams Company, which is a Fortune 200, which is an oil and gas company. Awesome. And so, yeah. um, and so in that in that within the first, the first let's see, the, I went started corporate and, and in, the, in the first two or three years i was able to build my first home you know just because i was prepared you know and 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 started a family and do those things but you know it's one of the first things i did when i got to the williams company i asked who was the ceo and how do you right. meet the ceo mm -hmm. and and men it's, like, it's difficult to meet him it's very difficult <laughs> but difficult I, difficult yeah, yeah. very difficult mm -hmm. but my thought was if I wanted to know what it looked like at the top, I have to talk to someone who actually is at the top. Exactly. And, and, yeah. and Dr. Stephen Covey always talked about his book, Start with the End in Mind. Mm -hmm. And so I have mm -hmm. to know what that looked like. And so, you know, I was able to go, get in contact with this um, executive secretary. And she's like, you'll have to wait about two or three months ago. I said, that's fine. I don't have nowhere to go. I'm just starting this thing. So it was all good. So ironically, he had a, he was sort of curious. And so he had a bump in the schedule three weeks later until they bumped me out. And I was like, okay, great. And he was like, okay, I've never really had um, a new staffer come and want to meet me and have a meeting with me and, and, and all the different things. And I said, yeah, I just want to know one thing, you know, what are the three primary things that allow you to be where you are today? And he wow. said, you know, and one of the first thing he said was humility. Like, Humility is a skill that hurts a lot of individuals. I said, what do you mean? It's like, well, you have to be okay with feedback and critical feedback and failure and, and understanding people trying to direct you in, in yeah. different ways because you take on a lot more response and you just don't know. Carlos don't teach a lot of the things you learn in the real world. So true. Life. So true. And so you have to be yeah. humility because if you have understand humility, you will not only be successful in what you do in the corporate world, You'll be successful in your relationships. Yeah, exactly. You'll be, spiritually, you will be more open and give up yourself, and and in your community, you will not have to always say what you know who you are. It just become it comes all for who you are and what you do. And That's if, so good. If if it's always I did this or I you know to people when you then yeah. you're not humble, mm -hmm. and so humility. And that was so. I mean, I had to actually try. So one of the things came up was humility. The one of the next thing he said was. Never give up if you believe in something. Because if you believe in it, you are going to invest into it. 
you're mm -hmm. going to invest not only your time, your effort, resource, but you will invest yourself into it. Just like you tried on that first date. You Some say, good well, nuggets, man. Pretty young lady or whatever it may be. <laughs> uh, you will give all you got because you're trying to get that. That's the goal. Mm -hmm. You have a goal mm -hmm. in mind. Well, that's life and business. You have a goal. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I was about to get, I was so fortunate to spend seven years with, with, with that organization. It just yeah. it, it taught you how to be a true professional. Um, wow, that's good. You know, I met with uh, Gary, uh, Gary Bayless. He was the controller. He was another one of my, he was actually one of my mentors. And okay. Eric Watson, uh, there he was uh, over HR and Michael Johnson. So I, I, I didn't fraternize with these guys, but I also will always had times we meet over a period of time. I think that's very important to have a mentor, someone who you can trust, a trusted advisor who's going to be honest with you, who's going to say, hey, this is what you should be doing or not be doing. And one of the That's things good. that came in there was you're not an accountant. You you, you smile to be an accountant, <laughs> but you're, you're uh, a lot of people. Like, you love people. That's you know? good. You Gotta to love people. Gotta yeah. love people. No, that's 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 good, man. You know what I um what I wanted to ask, what I wanted to ask you was when you you call the names of the persons back home, you know, Coach Moan McPhee, um, Coach Gary, and you know, I'm going. And the thing about it, this is like years ago you're talking about, but here right. it is. If you yeah, come in the community, yes, yes. exactly. If you come in the community now, these guys are still working. So here it is now. You how important would you say consistency is? Consistency. Yes, very. I think, you know, I had another like, just uh, it was a few years ago, and I had this, I was like, doing, man, you still, like, you still in the community, <laughs> you still doing this stuff. Like, he's yeah, a man it. in it. Uh, and he's such a bigger man in the community, off mm -hmm. West End, you know. Even Coach Mike Free, I was listening to a, a podcast he did uh, last year, and he seemed, he still seems so vibrant. And he's still, I think he, you know, he's he's the boss. I call Coach yeah. Mike the boss. You know <laughs> he I mean? is, man. Right. He, he is uh, the boss. <laughs> and, and he walks around. And, 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 and to give our audience an idea, this gentleman is about five foot two, five foot two. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yep. He was a baseball, baseball player, I think, right? A softball player. Yeah. <laughs> but he is the boss. And so, I, they, you know, they just, I think, and, and in fact, Moon might be. Also mentored Goon because Goon played yes, with him yeah, yeah, in, the, yeah. in the basketball league mm -hmm. in the Bahamas over a period yeah. of time. So I think mm -hmm. he was one of the guys was an off three. But but one of the things that I heard Goon said, and he mentioned another guy I never had a chance to play under, but he mentioned Norris Bean, who was another yeah. successful yeah. guy yeah. in that environment. Now you know what he said mm -hmm. with Norris? He said, No one that works Norris Bean. He said, No one that works Norris Bean. And I think that's so important. Your your work ethic has to be of such that mm -hmm. You, you have to be able to compete at a, at a level, whatever it is. If you want to be the best, uh, an accountant, a doctor, a lawyer, the best carpenter, plumber, you know, electrician, you got to work at it. You have to spend time. But you have to be, you have to have a relationship with it. You have to be yeah, in that's... love with it. You have, to, you have to internalize that process. And I think that's... those things allow you and help you to be successful in what you're doing and and, and greater. And yes, as another guy, he passed. May his soul rest in peace. He, you know, he went too soon. Who was who was leading up to that that path and being a figure in the community was with Gary the Greg with good news. Man, exactly, when exactly. That, that, that's that's. I was supposed to ask you about him too. I was supposed to ask you about Gary. Yeah, 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 yeah man, Gary, good, good fact, guy. Yeah. Gary in in two thousand two, uh, I started a, um, uh, the uh, summer program where I, uh, I do uh, summer camps and all the different things. And uh, when I brought over various NBA players, and we would do a week long camp, and and uh, we would do um, some workshops and different things. And Gary was always there. I mean, he was always, always. Yeah. he helped always. me with flying things. And I give a shout out to my guy Shaky Hall too. He yeah, yeah, yeah. Things. But <laughs> Gary was Gary was very ingrained, and I, he was a great loss to the community. Yeah, he was. Man. I'm glad. I'm, to the island, yeah. and I tell you, a lot of change. Since he passed away, because he was he yeah. worked hand in hand yeah. um, with with Goon. You remember? You remember Fritz? What's that? This guy, this, Fritz. Fritz was more down like an eight mile rock area. This guy was like he was instrumental to me. You know, playing in the in the in the junior league also too. Fritz was um you know similar to Gary. 
you know, similar to Gary. But when we when we look at when we look at the um, you know, that concept in terms of pursuing your dreams, you know, went over there and do it. Let's look away from the from you know from the business aspect of it to the importance of the role that you play now. You you're very um, you're you're interacting you know with your kids, other kids, but you know in particular your boys. You know a lot of times when I'm watching, I'm following you. You got those guys. They're working out. They're playing the games. It's like you are there. How important it is for a a father to you know to connect with his children, whether it's the boy or whether it's a girl. How important it is for a father to be there. You know, we had the role in terms of being mentored by great men here in our community. But now it is now, you know, that role has switched out. We're paying it forward. So tell me the importance of, you know, what you think the importance about, you know, the role that you are playing right now as a father. Yeah, that's good. Good question. Uh, I love my role as a father. Uh, yeah. <laughs> my wife telling me I'm a better father than my husband, but, you know, I take it. <laughs> but I, I think, you know, um, you know, and I, and I may have shared this with you, my father, Never saw me play a game of basketball. He never saw me run track. I mean, he he just didn't know. He just he never got it. And and so growing up, it was me figuring that stuff out. If I want to go to a basketball game, I had to get. I want to learn how to dribble a basketball. It, it was me. And I uh, and so I know how tough it was for me. I got there. I got here. But that internal fortitude is very important. Uh, as I as I paid forward to my kids. I think the, the the first thing you have to have with your kids before you do anything else is to have a relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, I think That's you good. have to have a relationship outside of sports. If you want them to be a doctor or a lawyer or accountant, whatever, you have to have mm -hmm. a relationship. Definitely. I mean, one of the things I see men struggle with their son was because they get up with the aspiration of their son being the next, you know, um, mm -hmm. professional athlete, whether it's in baseball, basketball, whatever it may be. That, that's their goals of all their daughters. Yeah, and, so and true. I, know yeah. For me, so true. I always aspire for my kids to achieve at the highest level. You know, go to the highest level Division One school and be, you know, be on the green stage or the stage shaking the commissioner's hand once the name mm -hmm. is called. Mm -hmm. Every guy mm -hmm. has that dream for their kids. Okay, well, we know that's a short dream for many because it ends. And that, so now what? And that's part of the talk, but so now what? I exactly. The one thing you have to always do is listen to your kids. Not always what they say, but you also got to listen with your eyes. I mean, your yeah. eyes and your ears. Your ears, so ears true. but you can see it. Your heart. Um, you know, I have, you know, that's with my oldest son, uh, Tyree, who I think he is one of the greatest speakers I've been around. Like, the kid can really, really speak. Wow, he has, wow. He's a linguist. Sometimes we got to bring him in. We got to bring him in sometimes. Like dictionary we, close to me or a translation. We gotta, I mean, he's, he's <laughs> oh, just, he's, oh, hey, like, <laughs> Like, you know, they say these guys on basketball is always in their bags. Well, he's always yeah. in the dictionary. He's wow, like that's good. Words on you, you know? That's but good, though. That's he good. has <laughs> such a unique ability to put words together that just sensationalize, sensationalize the conversation. And that's so good, man. Kyrie is a, you know, he's a, he's about five, six, five, seven, you know, in stilettos. And, um, and but, you know, he is just a, he's just a hard one. He grew up playing basketball. And his goal was like me to always go play basketball at a high mm -hmm. level. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, he, he was able to play on some of the biggest stage in, from, from high school and, and, and during the summer stuff. But, you know, part of what I always, for him, I was like, okay, how do I be honest with my son and still don't lose him in that process? You know, because as a father, you feel like you've given them everything you have and, and, and they can be successful. But you have to also be like, Son, I have to also make sure I look up for his best interest and put him on a path to be successful. And his path may yeah. not be my path, may be a lot different than mine. So, but so true. How do you be honest when, especially for me in the sports world, I have so many kids I help to go to college. I very mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And, and, you're doing and so, it. Go ahead. You're paying it forward, man. No, I said you. Yeah, I you're it paying forward. it forward. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you're doing but, but, it. But for him, you know, I thought he would be a, a okay college athlete. I thought he would be a brilliant mind to mm -hmm. be on the other side of college. Like, like yeah. I told him, you want to be on the decision-making side. And so we had a decision to make, go to a smaller school or go to a bigger school or power five school, which would allow you to get the experience and build the relationships and learn mm -hmm. from the very best at an early age. And mm -hmm. so we had that hard conversation, go to a smaller school and, and work to that process. And, and we opted to the other. 
But in order to have that conversation, you have to have that relationship. You have to yeah. have more than their sports and those so you have to have a good life. And you got to be revealing. And 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 so I think that's what's important for him. On the other oh. side, I have another son who was who would you consider a true college prospect, you know, who can play at a very high level. And so you have to balance between the two coming up. Like, you know, he would say, Dad, well, Tyler is getting all the love. People always talk about Tyler. Tyler's the second brother, and they don't talk about him. Like, yeah. <laughs> the reality is, Tyler, people see what they see. Now, yeah, I, exactly, see, yeah. I, see, I see an equal opportunity. Mm -hmm. You would agree that's as good, but people see what they see. But for yeah, parents, exactly. father, the one thing I want is I would like to say is, uh, and moms, you know, and I love my moms. They do a great job. They play the role of the father, they not do. a mom, to a lot of ideas. They do, way, yeah. You know, they do. But have a relationship with your kids. Be honest with them. Because if you have a relationship, they, they'll talk to you. They'll tell you things mm -hmm. without telling you things. You, you will learn yeah. from them. Um, so you will true. understand when they're hurting. So they can turn to you and not other resources, not other sources to feel levels of comfort. You have to be an heir. And I know sometimes we have to work two and three and do different jobs, but mm -hmm. you also part of your job is to making sure your kids don't have to be in a situation where they have to work two, two and three jobs. Mm -hmm. and so you, have to make, you have to build time within that, within our busy times, because we have to now give them an opportunity to be successful. So at some point, not that we stop living for us, but we got to understand that our roles have shifted and part of why our time is allocated and dedication to our kids. And that's when we lose our kids. We yeah. allow um, the video games and technology to raise our kids, and I refuse to do so. Yeah, I that's tell good. My kids, when they drive in the car with me, we allow no iPads on and no air. That's good, games. yeah. We have an That's good. That's good, man. That's, that's good. I mean, you making a lot of valuable points you know i was um you know my father i believe my mom and my dad i believe that they are you know but my father i've always been the person i was fortunate to have him there right i was i was fortunate to have my father there and the thing about it you know when you're talking about you know your father not ever coming to you know your basketball games or whatnot i remember i remember we had a um we had a, a, a i think it was a, a invite I think Mr. Fred squeaking. I think Mr. Fred, uh, Mr. Fred Mitchell, he was there. And while he was there talking, I looked through the room. We had a lot of mothers was there. My father was the only one. The only male was there, man. And I, I you know, I felt so proud. You know, I kind of smile a little bit. I don't think he had on the appropriate clothes, but he had on some poke, you know, polka <laughs> dot. <laughs> he had on the polka dot white right foot. Present. Yeah. Yeah, he had on the polka dot white shirt and not on the, the polka dot white and red. And he had on the solid red pants. You know, man, he was there and they called my name, man. And he was he was there for me, you know, and I, I so appreciate that. And even um one of the games, um, you know, at the Y, we was beating um Eight Mile Rock. Um, you know, we was playing in the championship. We uh, we won the championship and right. you know, the last seven minutes of the game it got kind of, you know, a little hostile. And the game was live on the radio. So Man, after the game, my father, when I uh, uh, walked out of the YMCA, when I looked in the parking lot, my father is there in the parking lot. This guy is like waiting on me. And this, you know, his first uh, question is to me, it's like, son, are you okay? And so I've always had that. I've always had my father was always there. I got, um, you know, six, six brothers. I always had that community of men around me in the midst of even having them. I still almost went astray. And so it's so important for, for men, so important for men and fathers to play that role in their lives. You know, just we've been watching, you know, we've been watching sports for a lot of times. You see guys in the in the football game and the basketball game, and they, they are celebrating. And when they're celebrating, they always talking about mom and hardly dad is there. You know, dad is somewhere doing something else, you know. Right. And so it's so it's so important for fathers to be there, man. And so for what you're doing, you know, I commend you. For working closely with your kids and you know you, you you're making all of us proud man what you're doing you know yeah thank you i think you know the thing like i said as related to the kids and, and again i want to get, go back and give a shot to my mom she she was able to attend a couple of my basketball games late she was like wow i wish i didn't even read you like you're pretty good they were talking about you wow folks were saying this and that about you and and i was smile i was like you know yeah i'm okay and i think she came to one game I think it may have been Hawksville. Yeah, wow. I think yeah, I think it was Hawksville, and um, 
the great spy Aiden. You know, he he had the honor of getting a 30 piece that night, I think. That was so my I, guy. I, I, yeah. I had one of those 35, 39 for a night against him, against Hawksville that night. But, <laughs> but my mom get to see me play. And Spy apologized. You know, didn't mean to do you that way. Uh, you Chris and those other guys, you know, I know it's just tough. It was tough dealing with me now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, that goes that humility out the door, right? <laughs> out the door. <laughs> uh, oh, man. You know, I, I, think, I think it's so important um, to, to just be able to, you know, identify and have your kids, you know, go through some of that with you and, and learn and, and understand, you know, how that process works, you know, on that side of it. And just, yes, again, that relationship, I think, it's yeah. so important. And just being there, listening, and it's not so much what you give your kids financially, you know. It's the time when you can reflect, like having those pivotal moments, you know, mm. and my, you know, my kids in college and about to go to college and just having conversations with the things we did, you know, when they were younger. It's like, wow, I'm so glad that's I good. did. You know, yeah, that's we good. Had that's you know, good. one of the things also I think I shared with you before I shared with the audience, I always like to try something new with my kids. And mm -hmm. so one of the things we learned how to do new at, uh, when they were younger was we learned how to snow ski together. So we'd go down to Colorado and um, and for spring break and just ski. And we all learned at the same time it was first time for all of us. Wow. And, you know, my, a lot of us don't ski that much from the Bahamas, like ski, yeah, man. Exactly. Yeah, we, we don't get that's, it. That's, no, that's, we're going to do it. Skiing, snow skiing. <laughs> no. But I'm telling you, yeah. that time that was so immaculate because we fell together, we learned together, and we still reflect back on that time. So find different adventures with, with to do things with your kids or that you can learn to do things together. It could be just going to the gallery or learning how to paint, uh, going in the in the in the in the, in the, in the mountain climbing, going rowing in the lake, whatever it may be. Just find something that you can, because those are the things that bring attachment. Those are the things that brings the bonding. Those are the things that, regardless of how irritated you get with each other, because always love brings you back together. You yeah. know. That's so I good. Think that's man. important as, as I you know wind up in terms of the, yeah. the the role of a father to his kids. Yeah. That's that's uh, that's awesome, man. You know, and, and the thing about it, you know, working for me in my field of work in terms of with counseling and you know, you're working with a lot of young men, mm -hmm. the the problem that what what I see with, with most of the young men, they are bitter. And they are bitter because I I remember having a meeting with, you know, meeting with one, you know, young man, he, you know, I reached out to him because I saw he was, you know, he was putting some, he was like angry. You could see in his tone and then the things that he would put out on social media, angry. So I reached out to him, you know, we sat down and so he said, man, you know, he you know, definitely really wanted to talk. So when we, we began to talk, he was talking about his father being absent and he was angry. So I said to him, I said, man, bro, I said, it'd be good for you to sit with your dad and, and really you know, just trash things out. But here's what he said. He said, my father's passed already. Mm. And the the absence of the father not being there in the lives of the, you know what I'm saying, the lives of the young men, a lot of them, they are bitter. They don't, they don't have that, you know, the, uh, like what you have, even sometimes, like my father was there, right? He was there, but he he taught me on the limit that he had, on the on the level that he was on. Right. Because basically, you know, he, he never sat down with me. The, the lesson I learned from my dad was more like hard work, you know, hard work, dedication. He, you know, he made sure that, you know, we, we had food to eat. He was, he, you know, he made sure I took care of the family, right. but you know, and that, and so, you know, we celebrate him for that. And he, you know, he showed us love in that sense, but he, he wasn't a father to say, well, sit down with us and, you know, communicate with us about money. Tell us about just like what you're talking about right now and having that, you know, like that, he, you know, he was there. There's so many kids who don't have that presence. Right. So many, you know, the girls they tend to, you know, it, it's a different, it's a different um, body language that you would see, or it's a different path that they may take. Right. The sons, you know, they take a different path also. So it's very important, man, the role that, um, you know, that, that that men play in their lives. And so I, I want to just take this time out, you know, because you know, we're going to go in a different gear. I want to take this time out and just encourage uh, men. Uh, you have a son, you know, you have a daughter, you and that, you know, you and the woman may not be married, you know, you may be outside of that home, but make sure, make contact with them, if not every day, every week, you contact and you have a relationship with that, you know, with your child, whether it's a girl, it's a female, because right. they want to hear, you know what I'm saying, they want daddy, they want to hear daddy, they want to hear, you know what I'm saying, when you, when they can think and they can just, um, 
just express themselves and daddy could be there, take him for a drive or something like that. That's what is needed so much. So we, I definitely want to encourage um, our fathers, the male in particular, the role that we play is so important. And I want you to reach back and develop that relationship with your son and with your daughter that I think is so important. You got anything you want to say on that, um, Doc? Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. I, I, again, I, um, the, the role as a father is just as important as the role as a husband. I don't know what yeah. gear you wanted to go to. But yeah, I no, like, touch on that, I'd be amiss if I didn't. Yeah, that's good though. Go ahead. Yeah, that's 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 awesome. Go ahead. Yeah, I think you have to in, in order to teach your, your son or daughter how to be a good person, in particular the young man, to be a good husband, you have to be in that role and you have to, you know, we as you fall down, you have to to understand what that looks like and you have to you have to allow them to see you to treat your wife or yeah. your parent or your husband, whatever as 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 their queen. So and true. I've, I've, I've gotten better. I think over the years you learn how to become, you know, a better husband and, be, and a better man and a better parent. And, you know, yeah, and my wife, and my, and my second marriage. And so the first one was, you know, I felt there's a lot of things I could have done differently. And you just mm -hmm. live with your learning in the process yeah. and continue to apologize for the things. I wish I was the person I knew now. Yeah. You always want to get it right the first time. And sometimes you just do. Yeah, yeah you know? that's true. And, 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 yeah. and you have to let your kids know that. And I talk yeah. to my kids about those things constantly, about just being honest with yourself, being honest about things. And in, in my current wife, you know, we, you you have to work through things together. It's like if you love it, you can work through it. You can you yeah. can work through that process. And you have to enjoy each other. And you have to show them yeah. how to love and how to enjoy and how to be appreciative. You have to you know you develop your own love languages and and but it's okay to show public affection and and holding yeah. hands and hugging and touching like with my boys. And even my, you know, my daughters when they're alive with my boys, I still kiss on kiss them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, man. Every day, you know, all day, yeah. Sometimes, but now they're like, oh, that's just part. That's just magic. You know, that's just what I do. And yes, I think that's okay, and it's okay. Yeah. You know, me and both, me, all of my boys, we cry together. So yeah, I think that's good, man. To show, you know, just a couple of weeks, one of my boys, he was going through something very challenging. He just, he just break down and cry. You know, we just, we, we cried together, and I think that's mm -hmm. important to let yeah. them know it's okay to. To have empathy, it's okay to be empathetic because if you don't, you're not human, and then you that's can't love the way you need to love a woman that's, or that, a man, whatever it is you desire. That's powerful, you know, and because you know my my conversation, you know, I, I heard um Doctor Kendall Major, a former speaker of the House for the PLB, you know, good good friend of mine. I met him through uh through Doctor Mars Monroe, and you know, I remember you know we had a man a man conference, and he said that you know every Every man needs another man to tell him that he love him. You know, it's like, and, you know, to some guys who are not probably, you know, who doesn't understand that it's, it seems soft, you know, it seems soft, but it's like, there's not a time that I don't speak to, to you. You know, my wife could say there's a time I don't speak to any of my friends, my brother, my father in particular, when we hang that phone up that I don't say, dad, I love you. And he don't say, son, I love you too. Yeah. But we don't go, we don't hug each other. You know what I'm saying? When we hang up, you know, we say, man, bro, I love you, man. You know, we we'll talk later. It's like, that's, that's how we express that. And, and, and so when, when persons don't have that, it's like, you know what they're going to do? And, 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 in some cases they don't really catch it. Like for you, uh, not having dad there is like, you want to make up for that. There's an understanding that you have, but some persons, they don't, they don't get this understanding. And so what they do, they take this, right? They take this emptiness and this void into their fatherhood. You know, being a father now, being a, a, a being a husband, and now being a father, all of a sudden, it's a coldness because they can't give it because they never had it, and they haven't learned that. You know, and so it's very important for us to express, you know, love to each other in a fashion way. Let me and ask you this: when, yeah, yeah. When did when did that become a part of what you do? Because we didn't grow up with that. Like, when did that become okay, comfortable for you to say, "Dad, I love you," or right? Like, because we didn't grow. So tell me, and I share my thought, but tell me when. That happened for you, you know. For me, it is it's, it's like it is, it is always. I think for me, affection for me was always you know that that always been a part of my life. And the affection came like this: it came because I'm the last child out of ten. I'm the last child out of ten, so I have six older brothers, and everyone you know they looked out for me. You know they looked out for me, sisters. Okay. You, know, okay. you know, so I've always had that affection. Always had the affection. So I'm I'm very sensitive, and when I'm when when I'm I'm around a person and I don't I don't feel that very very you know what I'm so it's like it it really 
I don't I wouldn't say the age, but it just it just happened naturally as a young person growing up. I've always been affectionate, and that's that's really what I always show. And, and um, so I know that when when there's persons that I know they're uncomfortable with it, I tend to draw back. The guys who I know they're comfortable with it, it's like, hey, you know, I express myself, man. We hug, you know, we hug, we talk, and stuff like that. I remember, yeah. I remember my my friend, um, Yellow. You know, remember Yellow, uh, Durkin, right. right? And when D was in school, no, I went away first. I was in college and he was at, yeah, he was, he was to school in high school. And man, if you would read our letters, our letters was like, so effective. It's like, when you read the letters, you would think like that's a boy and a girl writing, you know what I'm saying? Writing each other. I'm saying, I'm saying, bro, man, we miss you. You know, I miss you, man. When you walk on the road together, it's like, we begin to just talk and it's like showing affection, affection as a man. Hey, that's, that's what we do. So it's right. not, just, I don't have a particular, you know, when it happened, it's just, you know what I'm saying? That's how I was brought I was brought up, you know, I was brought up that way. You know, because I know growing up, one of the favorite sayings um, is, you know, I don't like mine. But, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's know? so true. And that's so, I think I mean, you and I, and we all exchange those things. Yeah, yeah, and we I, did, I, yeah. It hardened us to the fact that, not that, you know, it, it was a, it was a toughness and appeal that, you know, that, that, that got us through. Mm -hmm. and, and, but for me, you know, I always, when I grew up, I always hugged on my mom and, yeah, I yeah. Under, like I was a mama's, like my sisters. Yeah, like, you're like, yeah. They probably called me the favorite, you know. But <laughs> yeah. I, guess I had that deal with my mom, and mm -hmm. um, but I didn't really. I don't, you know. I I think as I got old, I started to tell my mom I love her more, and I would yeah, hug yeah. and kiss her. Yeah, yeah. My siblings, wow, which, wow. You know, I didn't see them doing that a whole lot. Wow, think, that's good. Yeah, you know, that's not good. That they don't love, but I just don't think. It was a part of what we saw every day yeah, because I grew yeah. up in the house with my dad showing yeah. affection. And like I said, it, it even took me a while to get to that point now. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Pretty much now, like holding my wife's hand and those things and, and just being expressive. And like you say, with my boys, and they'll tell you every day, we, we see each other, we talk, I love you, Pop. So I yeah, love you. Yeah, that's that good. Man, yeah. 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 You know, and then how you doing? And a lot of times, you know, but one of the things me and my boy, and this is us and, and things we and, and, and how, in fact, we're working on a brand around this, but it's called YBCCP. It's, that's that's what that's what I wanted to. Yeah, that's that's really the direction I wanted to go into. Matter of fact, after the put, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, and so and, and so I'll say that we go. You know what? You know, your best can be better. YBCP, yeah, YBCP, your best. Yeah. And I say that to them every. What have you done today? And and that and that even evolved over time, Pastor. Like it, it was just conversations, and yeah, and I said yeah. that so much it evolved. And so my second uh, oldest boy, Tyler, uh, said, that's probably daddy best slogan. You know, I have all these yeah. slogans. <laughs> that's good. Different things. And he said, yeah. I love that one. And so for him, it worked. And Tyler, yeah. he loves it too. And then Torrin, he's the youngest. He's just trying to figure things out. Yeah, trying so, to figure it out. Yeah, that's and, good. Um, so I think that's important. So I'll let you go ahead and read. We can yeah. Dialogue, yeah, that's right? good, man. I was, you know, it's something that um, I've learned Something, you know, and the thing about it, when we're speaking about sport and basketball, you know, these are things that what we learn competing, you know, being competitive on the basketball court, so many life lessons that we learn. And from that life lessons, I heard Magic Johnson mention about it. You know, he when, he, when he first was diagnosed with the, you know, with the virus and he was like, you know what, he saw it. He, he took it just like basketball. He took it in a sense like, you know what, hey, I competed against Larry Bird and he took it. You know, and that's what he said verbally. He said, you know. I took it and he used it like, you know, to, to that degree. We've learned so many lessons, man, so many um, awesome lessons. But there's a lesson that I learned by playing basketball. Um, Coach Moan McPhee, I was having a bad game. And having the bad game, he, I, it's like I didn't want to shoot the ball anymore. So he said, sling up, keep shooting the ball. He said, keep shooting, you know. And that's a concept, bro, that I, I adopted. And so now... When I when I spoke to you, I heard you talking with but but you'm know saying but trotting and it's very similar. So tell us, man, about the brand. Your I mean, I think you wrote a book on it. There's some some type of you know, tell us about your your company, your business, the thing that you're venturing in. It has something to do with keep trotting. Tell us about that. Yes, sir. Thanks for that. Um, and by the way, before we move into the business, Wayne Slinger was a bigger hog than Roy Penn in high school. Yeah, he hogged the ball all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it anyway. Um, wow. <laughs> for the business venture, you know, so I always, uh, 
watch and and, and and try to figure like how do I bring stuff together and 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 so so I, I was at Williams and you know I, you know I was taught that man you're accounting but you, you you do a lot of other things better than that you deal with people so when I was at Williams I joined the, what we call the college recruiting team and so in the college recruit you would go and recruit some of the best minds around the country to come and work for the, all your fortune turning companies and so I worked I worked with uh, went to recruit at a lot of the HBCUs in Atlanta um, the University of Notre Dame, UCLA, some of the best, you know, schools in the country, and just recruited, interviewed, and just try to find. And in that, most of the kids, ninety percent of the the students I interviewed, who are like high scholars, was like, "Y'all really to ask questions and to make us think is better than any we've had mm -hmm. experience." Because these are kids who've been recruited by many companies around the the, the, the country. Mm -hmm. And so at that point, I knew I had something going and just being able to get things out of people and, and digest and digress. And, and so in that saying, so when I, I decided to leave, I said, you know what, at some point I want to continue to, to be self-employed and work for myself and do different things. And so I never, I said, man, you never give up on stuff, bro. You never give up. And so I was like, okay. So I, my first book was Mind Trotters. Oh, yeah, Mind, Mind Trotters. Trotters. That's it. Yeah, I Mind have that book. The first book. I have and, that book, um, yeah. And my trotters is like my trotters. So we were. In, I was in a. I was in my this. I was in my uh, residency in Arizona. My first residency, and and you we were working in teams, and and they were like we had we. Had, I mean, you had to cram residency and and that that you had to cram a semester work word of work into like twenty one days. Like it's it's. I mean, it's it's just it's just yeah. very 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 intense intellectual. Intense, yeah. Mm -hmm. and so you have to be at a very high level. And so I was like, you know, I can call our teams mind trotters. I was like, I said, well, y'all know the globe trotters, right? They're like, oh, yeah. Well, instead of running around the world playing basketball, we can trot around each other's minds sharing our ideas. And they said, that's oh, good. yeah, fabulous. <laughs> and so that's when mind trotters was born. Wow, that's good. And the points didn't keep going. And, and so, you know, we put together a whole lot of stuff. And um, it was me and I think it was four ladies. And I'm in there with rocket scientists and NASA and 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 college vice presidents and vice presidents and i mean all these very smart people mm -hmm. and i'm i think i was 20 i was early 20s late 20s mm -hmm. I, actually mm -hmm. and i had all these, these great minds and i just felt like wow i i can i can do this because if you ever know if you do a go to a, a, a doctoral program you know we started with 20 and 7 graduated it's not the smartest people but the ones who don't give up yeah and continue and, and so i was like at the end of it i was like oh keep you know try this Keep oh them. I can keep doing people's minds. I can keep trotting. That's what the keep trotting. Come up. Wow, that's so good. On, on keep trotting. Keep Which trotting. Ball with the mind trotters dealt with, you know. And I'm actually doing a series on it now. I post every Mondays on my web page and my mm. my business page, and it's a selection of animals, uh, tribes who have a name. But you know, all these individuals take on the character of people I knew growing up. And so I'm not going to give names of who, but not yeah. just like friends, but you know they take on character people that are up for six. That's and so, good. And, and, and how they work in teams, and then my goal is to, to someday get that to the big screen, which I'm having a lot of success now with doing some streaming right now and yeah. making it work. So we have about two seasons of ten to twelve episodes apiece, and that's, that's my good, choice. And so the keep trotting feed, my choice is about the team. Keep trotting is about the individual. Keep trotting talks about your pursuit of success. Mm -hmm. Never give up on your pursuit of success. Never give up on your dreams. And I, I I identify key principles in that. And one of the things I talk about is having a detour. Detour is defined. Uh, the, the, the detour is D is for defining what it is you're trying to get done. The E in detour is education. Educating on yourself on the purpose you've desired you want to go, the direct you want to go in. Uh, the T in detour, the, the T is now Time management, utilizing your time. How do you That's time good. manage your time accordingly, right? The O is for organizing yourself. You know, a lot of times we have a lot of information, we have to mm -hmm. organize it. Mm -hmm. U and detour is understanding. How do you now, understanding brings clarity. So if you understand stuff, you, you're clear on how you move things through, right? That's the U. And then the, and the R is risk taking, applying the principles. You got to go get it. A lot of times we plan and have great ideas, but you know what? We afraid to be great. We, we, we yeah. think we have to be great the first time. Yeah, so get true. It done. Yeah, you know? so true. Yeah. And to take, so that's the detour, and that's a part of the keep trotting philosophy. You got to, but you got to, and you know, once you get there, you have to keep reapplying, reapplying, reapplying. And so a lot of my hashtags, I have keep trotting. 
You yeah, know, you try that's good. Man. Up, yeah. The folks who follow me, they get it. You know, they got it. Uh, yeah, man, that's that's good. That's good, my brother. Yeah, man. So we, you know, believe it or not, I I thought we were probably, you know, we got started a little late. Uh, you can hear the squeaking and you know, in it kind of, you know, just having some difficulties in that area. But again, I didn't want it to, you know, we put it out there. We spoke about it for some time. I didn't want to cancel it. You know, you came on. I just want to thank you for our time. It's almost an hour. I just want to thank you for our time and thank you for, for you know, just going ahead of all of us. You know, you went ahead, you set the path, and I always talk about when I went, to, you know, when I was to school in Oklahoma, you already finished college, you, you know, you got home, and I was able to kind of crash out with you on the weekends and all that. And so, man, you have set the tone uh, for so many of us as, you know, young behemoths and so many other persons you came in, con on, in contact with when it comes down to keep going. Don't ever give up. You know, we talk about, you know, your evolution, you know, where you came from. And so you you set that tone for all of us, man. And I just, I'm, I'm proud of you. Just want you to know that, you know, I'm proud of you. Continue to post. Um, you know, you can make mention, uh, just before we end, make mention of your your YouTube channel. Uh, make mention of your you know, your page where persons they want to check it out. They can subscribe. They can kind of follow you on social media. So you can just give them that. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So I have a couple of, you know, um, sites up at RoyPinder.com. That's my website. You can find my links to all of my my pages. Uh, Mind Trotters. You want to subscribe to my YouTube channel? It's Mind Trotters. Um, and then and my um, and then of course you know Roy Penn. You have all my business pages. School of Synergy is one of my my online. Yeah, that's coming along. Yeah, it's coming along. Uh, yes, go on and just uh, um, sign up and, and and go from there and and just work at your own pace. Have a lot of exciting new classes we've added program for you so check it out school of synergy you can get that from my my facebook page or you can just uh google it and it'll, it'll should come up um and that's every tuesday i post i have a synergy tuesday yeah um, synergy you know, tuesday. tuesday and i just give you know give, give different nuggets on ways to keep trotting you know it's for it's based for the individual but it's also designed for the team and so um on mondays now like i said i've started posting on my website my my web uh facebook page uh, my every week I post an episode of my charter. So I'm on season th uh, episode three, season one. We just I just posted on establishing goals and just talking about setting goals. So every week it's it's going to get very interesting. But not only is it that it tells a story and it's ongoing. It's perpetual to show how the <laughs> mind has evolved over time. And so just following me every Mondays on Facebook and, and my, my 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 um postings on Tuesdays, my synergy Tuesday. Look for the book. I have I have the book, the new book on mind trotters coming out, and I also have book for kids pre-K and to to four, five, six, seven, eight, nine years old kids book that would also be out with the videos that will accompany each book, and then I have a book on leadership. It's called Synergistic Leadership that should all be out in the spring, and it all be on my web page and my website and all that I've mentioned, and I'll send a note after this broadcast. I'll I'll retype. Some of the information you can follow me on all my various um, um, social media outlets. But I thank you for your time. Again, hopefully, we, we all continue to synergize in this process. You know, I'm the big synergy guy. Me and Pastor Kerry, I think we we had a we had a great topic tonight and great yeah. conversation, yeah. great dialogue, and and hopefully we was able to mm -hmm. you know get to some individuals, man, woman, kids, uh, and, and just hope you take some nuggets uh, from this and hopefully see you on the other side. Yeah, man. Uh, Doc, I just want to thank you so much, man. And for all of the, you know, the men who's a part of the huddle uh, group, just want to thank you, you know, thank you guys for, you know, for being a part of the group. And also we want to, you know, thank all of our viewers, uh, persons who, you know, view it tonight who probably comment. And again, uh, my brother and friend, uh, Dr. Pindo, I, I'm, I'm grateful, man, grateful for our friendship. I'm sure we're going to have a lot more dialogue. We're going to collab, you know, collaborate. And so I'm excited for our friendship. And I just want to thank you so much again um, for, you know, for, for joining us tonight. And I want to say hello to your kids, you know. And yeah. this is for my man, Irvin. You know, Irvin, I haven't talked much about Irvin, but, you know, yeah. Irvin is, yeah, man. Yeah, man, <laughs> yeah, man we'll I, do that. And, and the thing about it, here's who asked for you. I told him, I matter of fact, I send him the flyer, Philip Johnson. You remember Coach Philip Johnson from Hawks, but who yeah. coached it up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Philip Johnson. Yeah, he said hello, and then I, matter of fact, I sent the flyer out to Michael, um, uh, uh, to Michael Wilson. So, and he just said, you know, he gave his love and all that, man. And then I, I mentioned uh, Coach Clark today, and he said definitely be tuning and watching. And so, 
Uh, my brother, uh, we love you, man. And thank you so much again. And want to thank all of you guys. And so I'll leave you with this. You know, when you live, it's like the Incredible Hulk. We talk about the Incredible Hulk. But when you live in all the things we talk about today and pursuing your dreams, we're talking about, you know, when you live, live incredibly. And that's that. You know, so we're going to just end with that. In your living, live incredibly. So you guys have a good night. And thank you for tuning in and watching. And again, uh, Dr. Pinda, thank you so much. We are talking the back end of our conversation. Love you. Buddy. Thank you. Good night. Love you, man. Blessings. Okay, take it now. All right. Bye-bye. All right.